So we've now given you two examples of how renormalization works. We had the Markov chain example, and what we saw there was our first introduction to fixed points as you continually coarse grain the data and asked what model could describe that coarse grain data, you found that everything flowed to a lower dimensional subspace of the original model space. In the case of the cellular automata, we did something a little bit different. In that case, we coarse grained along the time dimension, but also found that in order to stay in the same model class, we were forced to coarse grain in the spatial dimension as well. And in that case, what we did was we left the spatial coarse graining free and we said, look, here's a particular evolution rule for the cellular automata at the fine grain level. Find, run, find one at the, at the coarse grain level and I'll give you a freebie. You can pick any projection you like as long as it's not trivial. If you do that, you actually find that it is possible to coarse grain cellular automata and we find a whole set of really interesting relationships. In some cases, though, we found those relationships to be a little unsatisfying. So it was exciting at first to learn that you might be able to coarse grain rule 110 because rule 110 is computationally universal. That means that a coarse graining, if the projection was good enough, would allow you to do calculations much faster than you began. Unfortunately, what we found was that the projections that worked for something like rule 110, even though they weren't technically trivial, were trivial in the sense that, for example, they made use of the irreversibility of Rule 110. And what they did was figure out, oh, look, there are some sort of Garden of Eden states that will never appear. If they appear in the initial conditions, they'll be instantly erased and never reemerge. And now the projection operator just projects one set to zero, the other set to one, and has an evolution operator that keeps the ones all the same and turns all the zeros into ones. Then at the end of the cellular automata lecture, I said, okay, look, fine, you didn't like that sometimes when I gave you a projection operator, what happened was that the evolution became trivial. I was losing something interesting about the original model. I thought that I was OK with the projection, but then when I look at what it's actually doing, it doesn't seem so good. And I said, OK, fine, look, what if we were to specify the projection ahead of time? And I gave you an example of a really natural projection, which is take groups, cells of groups of three, and have them do a majority vote. So it's almost like averaging, it's not quite, we have to keep them black and white. So we just say, ah, okay, look, if there's three, if there's three cells, if two of them are black, make the coarse grain supercell black, and look at that evolution. And I showed you how that really natural projection that you'd want to do with the cellular automata led to non-local interactions. In other words, it was clear just by looking at an example, in that case from Rule 90, it was clear just by looking that it would be impossible to find any kind of cellular automata they would allow it to work. And that's because cellular automata take something at time t and turn it into something at time t plus 1. But what we found was that there were cases where the same configuration at time t led to two different configurations at time t plus 1. And the reason is, is that the fine-grained evolution, in that case for rule 90, was like these little light-colored triangles, and light-colored triangles would collide and produce a darker triangle. When they produced that darker triangle, all of a sudden, it became visible with the coarse grain state. But there was nothing in the coarse grain image that would tell you that was about to happen. It sort of seemed to come out of nowhere. And because of that effect, what we realized was that coarse graining sometimes leads to a form of non-locality. In this section, we're going to take not a cellular automata model, but something that we draw from the physical sciences called the icing model. And we're going to see how something similar happens in that case. By taking a very natural coarse graining of this model, something that we would like to use, when we do that very natural coarse graining, what we find is that the exact solution that we want is no longer in the same model class. And in fact, by throwing out some of the information, we've allowed arbitrarily long distances to start communicating with each other. When I throw out information in my local environment, all of a sudden what I might do accidentally is bring in information from much, much further away. By simplifying the data, I've made the model not just complex, but even potentially pathological.